Hi, and this is Stephen Ball, and um, in this section we're going to be having a look at BizFlow, which is a multi-form viewer, and BizFlow was written to give us a new way of looking at data in a data set. Now we're going to use FishFax as our data, and we've created here, we've got a nice kind of cover form that's been showing. And then we'll see as we go through, every single record in the FishFax data set is represented by its own individual card or page that's um, shown. So these are all individual forms, and each form points at the record on the data set. Um, the data is managed through a client data set with a clone cursor. And that means we're able to load up all the data at once and then just share a pointer to that data set using the great technologies we have within client data sets so we don't have the data multiple times in memory. And then right at the end here we have our summary data which we can kind of play around with in 3D space. And I've managed to turn completely backwards. There we are. And we also have a 2D version of the, um, the T-chart showing the average length. So if we go back a, a record here and let's update this to... Um, let's make it something a little bit bigger, say 400. We can come back and we see the data automatically picks through using live bindings to automatically update the, the charts. And obviously we have this running on Windows, but we can also target it out to the Mac as well. So let's have a look at what we did to get this actually running in the first place. Well, we started with a main form, and I'll just hide a couple of bits on the left here. And on this form we've got a viewport 3D, and um, within the viewports 3D we have a T layout 3D and that enables us to lay out data in a 3D space and if we go and have a look at the load button we have a method here for load data which is literally just right below and we've created a helper class called a layer 3D list which provides us a list of all the forms that we've loaded up and literally nice and simply we're creating that managed list we're then creating our data sets and we are then adding in our cover form and then looping the data sets and creating a data form for each record within the data set and the T form data create itself finds the current record and loads that current record in. So if we're going to have a look at the data form and the form create, we can see here we're cloning the cursor of the main um, fish facts data set and then we're going to the current record and then we're then loading up um, that's that record onto screen. Um, there's our kind of cover page, just a typical Delphi form. This one here actually has um, some 3D text and this again is in a viewport 3D on a 2D form mixed with some 2D elements as well. So, But there's no reflection on this page and there's no reflection on this page, and in fact this doesn't look the same as what we're seeing on the screen. Well, that's because we've been using styles as well. So if we go to the form here, we can see we have a style book loaded, and the style book has the dark style loaded into it. And that's providing the nice kind of dark look to the buttons and to the rounded rectangles and the sliders and so on. So at the point that we load in the forms, 
if we go back to the data form, we can see that we're initializing the new form with the dark resource starbook um, to be the same as the, uh, the forms, or, sorry, setting the forms starbook to be the same as the main forms dark resource. And this means that automatically this in all the, um, the labels and the edit boxes match in with the, the style that we're applying to the main form. So let's just um, let's just run this again and go and have a look at that. In fact, I've got this targeted out for the Mac now, so we'll get to see that this works both on Windows and on Mac. And we can see the menu here is now applied up at the top corner, and we have now the same thing working on Windows and on Mac. But as you notice, all the controls, the text in the boxes here is now white with black backgrounds. This is reflective of the style that's been chosen from the main form. So let's go back to our code and let's have a look at the actual helper class that we've got written that is helping manage the layouts. Because that's where a lot of the magic is actually happening. So let's start off with a quick overview of what we have in here. We've got a T layer 3D list, which is a custom class that we've written that contains an object list which is typecast for T layer 3D. And we have on here a number of properties set. So let's just minimize this so we can see a bit more code. We have the owner, we have the parents, so we know which layout that this is loading into. We have a size factor to help us with the ratios in terms of how big it is in the foreground and the background. We're passing in the background color that we want to use. And these are all being used to set properties on the object. We then have a move to position which the scroller and the on click is using. And that move to position literally works all the way through and changes the position of the current form to be um, either in the background, on the left or the right, or staying in the front and moving the other forms over to be in the correct position. So there's a little bit of maths going on here just to work out where they should go. And we then have animate float being fired in here to actually tell the current forms to move and to change their position X and Y accordingly and also their Z position to move them forward and back. We also have taken the standard T layout and we've extended, I've created an extended layout, um, a class type which has got a backscale and this is used to help um, tell me the X and Y scaling for moving it back and forth. Um, we've also created here a T on position change procedure which is then used on the main form to um, be notified from the object itself that the position has changed so we can then update the position of the slider on the screen as well. So let's have a look at what happens when we add a form in, because this is probably the most important part of the whole kind of setup. Well, we've got a procedure in here to embed a form, and that literally the concept of parents and ownership within FireMonkey is a little bit different to how it is in the VCL, but still it's very similar. So the owner is still the form that owns the controls. However, those controls can then be parented into another control. So we have a layer here that we create and then within the layer we have a layout and the layout has the controls it embedded into it. So we can see here the layout takes the controls from the form. So we can then see those controls on the layout and against that layout we then have the, the reflection effect added so then we get the nice reflection 
and that reflection and the main layer, uh, sorry, and the main layout are contained within the layer. So the layer is bigger than the layout, which allows for the reflection to fall underneath it. We're then also able to add the internal on mouse down events to capture when that has been selected so we can move to that current position. Now to finish off we've got our summary form and the summary form has just got a couple of charts added to it and we're using live bindings here to again take a handle on that data set and bind the data through to the charts and using live bindings we're able to get that real-time update um, in the same way that we would have with um, standard data aware controls because remember the controls in FireMonkey are non-data aware we actually use the live bindings to bind into them but still we're able to get some really good um, uh, code visualizations using the charts with very little code. Anyway, that's that's about it for me. I hope you found that an interesting introduction to Multiform Viewer and some of the techniques that we've used to get um, some really nice, interesting 3D effects running in a business context.